everyone, we're about to start, but let's not let Adrian Adams and their uh, first precinct collaborators stop us, okay? Hello! Hello, everyone! We said we'd be back, and here we are! Yeah! Thank you all so much for being here with us today. This is the fourth time this year that the Ain't I a Woman campaign has called folks out to City Hall to demand that Speaker Adrian Adams put intro 175 to a vote and end the racist exploitation that is the 24-hour workday once and for all. <laughs> Home care agencies are beginning to feel the pressure and some have even started to split shifts. But until Adams passes our bill, bosses will continue to exploit our most vulnerable workers. Today, we've gathered as home attendants and community members. We've got teachers here. Woo! We have retirees. Woo! Thank you, retirees. Students. Woo! Restaurant workers. Yeah. Alice to translate. My name is Shu Ying Cheng. I've been a home attendant for 10 years and have worked 24 hours for seven. The patient I took care of didn't wear a diaper, so I'd often have to help her go to the bathroom at night to prevent her from dirtying her clothes and bed. Although I'm not doing 24 hours anymore, I have insomnia. I get exhausted without doing anything, but I can't fall asleep when I lay down. I've injured my arm and broken two tendons, and I'm still dealing with back pains, stomach pains, and swollen feet. 24-hour workdays should not exist on Earth. The home care agencies and insurance companies suck our blood dry and only pay us 13 hours of wages. Now, the U.S. government not only encourages our bosses to torture us, but also spends so much money funding the war on Palestine. We oppose war abroad and racist violence at home. Speaker Adams, put intro 175 to a vote immediately and split the 24-hour shifts into two 12-hour shifts. Otherwise, we will come back every month to protest until you step down. Sometimes it feels impossible to stop the U.S. war machine from committing atrocities in other countries. But the home attendants see very clearly, we are fighting the same enemy. We can't attend a protest on Saturday and continue slaving away for our bosses on Monday. 24-hour workdays show us there is no limit to how much the ruling class will exploit us, and they will only continue to destroy workers here and fund genocides abroad unless we all fight. Fight the violence overseas by fighting the violence here at home. This is why we are here today, to call on Speaker Adams to stop America's blood sucking and bloodshed by bringing the No More 24 Act to a vote now! No More 24! No More 24! No More 24! Up next, we're going to hear from our recently re-elected City Council member for District 1. Give it up for Christopher Marte! No more! No more! No more! No more! No more! Every night, in a number of thousands of buildings throughout New York City, when everyone has their lights off, a patient screams, a home attendant turns on the light, turns the body of the patient, lifts them up, takes them to the bathroom, helps them pull down their pants, helps them wipe themselves. Two hours later, 
Another patient screams, falls out of bed. A home attendant comes, lifts them up. Every single night, these women in front of me and home attendants all throughout New York City are doing God's work. They're serving, they're saving our most vulnerable population. But our city, our city who claims to be a sanctuary city, a city who says this is a union town, a city that says immigrant workers of colors matter, turn their backs on you, turns their back on all these home attendants. Shame! Shame! They turn their backs for powerful unions, for special interests, for insurance companies. Because they know they can get away with it. But this year, we have shown the power of these women. We have shown the power of people building coalitions throughout New York City among the working class. Whether you're a teacher, a retiree, a health professional, a home attendant, a delivery worker, you have stood up and said, no more 24. No more 24. No more 24. No more 24. We all know that if this happens to one of us, it happens to all of us. Every night at the six o'clock news, we see atrocities happening all around the globe. But what's a better picture of the home attendant being with her patient watching that news and suffering the same way people are suffering all around the world? That's the picture, that's the image that we should be sending to every, Senate, every elected official that tries to say they're fighting for us. So we are here and we are back building on the momentum that have grown from our hearing last fall, from meeting with elected officials this past week to demand Speaker Adams to stand up or step down because we have to pass the No More 24 Act. Thank you. That's right. Woo! and I am a member of Anak Bayan Queens, which is a youth organization fighting for national democracy in the Philippines with a socialist perspective. We are here today to express solidarity with the working women and people who are exploited by the 24-hour day here in New York City. As a nurse who works in health home care, I meet many migrant women home care attendants. They work 24-hour shifts, not by choice, but because of corporate greed and exploitation. That's right. As a nurse, as a nurse, I see hundreds of homebound patients who require help with bathing, dressing, toileting, eating, repositioning if they are bed-bound, all back-breaking work. If a home care attendant is with a patient for 24 hours, when do the home attendants themselves get to bathe, toilet, eat, and sleep? Across the river in Jersey City at a Filipino fast food restaurant called Jollibee, migrant and youth workers are forced to quickly produce meal after meal for hundreds of impatient customers. While profits reach new heights, the wages of workers stay the same and working conditions are worse. Equipment stays broken, more people get injured, supplies run out, and there are never enough crew on the floor. We shouldn't have to fight for we shouldn't have to fight so hard for basic dignity. That's right. <laughs> but this is what it looks like to live in a US-led system that brutally exploits workers for profit. Like home attendants, many at Jollibee are working class migrants who suffer inhumane conditions to take a meager paycheck while corporations get richer. Since the U.S. has colonized their country and crushed their economy, Filipinos are forced to work overseas as caregivers and domestic workers. Filipinos at home <clears throat> are forced to live on the meager crumbs of overseas workers 
whose labor goes on to fund the U.S. war machine that is killing, pa killing Palestinians as we speak. Shame! 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 Despite, despite the ruling class's attempts to stifle any resistance to maintain their power, the workers are winning. It is the home Ooh! attendance. Ooh! It is the home attendance strength, resolve, and unity with the people that will bring them to victory. Jolly Bee workers in Jersey City organized to demand higher pay and better conditions. Nine of them were illegally fired for organizing, but after our community showed up to fight alongside them, all nine Jolly Bee workers were received back pay, while three of them have been reinstated to work at the store where the fight continues. We must continue to fight back. We call on all workers, all Filipino youth, students, women, LGBTQ, to, to continue fighting for what is right and for what we deserve. It is the collective action of many and the oppressed majority that will defeat the rich and the powerful few. Woo!